Isn't it nice to see them in their summer holidays in the full uniform? <laughs> you must love that, boys. You must love that whole I idea. I think love the homework I gave them on the train down as well. <laughs> <laughs> Look, these, these lads, what I think is really brilliant, they're only 12 years of age, and yet you can see this whole personality. I mean, they are perfectly formed little people, aren't yeah. they, really? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. They're little adults, and it's our job, especially as high school teachers, to make sure they're prepared for the big bad world out there and the outside world. And these are two fantastic students, and I couldn't be prouder of them, and putting them on a national platform is amazing. Well, Jack, I was so impressed with you, at your kindness that you showed there. Um, what was it? What, what happened when you first saw Rani that made you want to go and kind of take him under your wing? Because he was in the corner by himself so far. He needs a friend, so I thought, as a person, I'll go up to him and ask him, how are you, where are you from? He said, Syria, and I took a step back because I, on the radio, you hear bad, uh, TV, you hear bad things about it. And he said, come and join us, come and join our group, and he did. And there we are. And what did, what did you Do you know think? what? And He's going to go far yeah. in life. <laughs> yeah, there is absolutely no doubt. I, I think I, someone I, upstairs is signing him up as oh, we speak. <laughs> very, <laughs> very good. Very good. Um, and, and what were you going through at that point, Rani? How were you feeling about being at the school? I was, when I was alone, like, I was, like, really sad because I don't really have any friends. When Jack came up to me, I, I felt something in, in my heart, and then we be friends. And now <laughs> you're, like, best, best friends. Now. Yeah. And what kind of things do you like doing together? What do you do at school in break? You know, what are the two of you up to? What football, sort of thing? Yeah. Sport, football, sports. Yeah. I'm just having a chat. Football. Yeah. What football? Bear in mind you're in Salford. Yeah, I'm a Bolton fan. Well, that's pretty stupid, isn't it? <laughs> Oh, well, you're, 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 you could probably, you know, you're stones throw from the Theatre of Dreams. <laughs> what? Well, anyway. Um, Rani, anyway. Your, your family had come from Syria and yeah. your English wasn't very good. You had very, very basic English. Yeah. So has Jack been helping you? How does he help you with your language? Like, if I don't understand a word, he tell me what does it mean that I understand it. Are you teaching him a Manchester accent as well? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, Miss Shanks, all of this is wonderful. Two great guys and a story to melt your heart, and it's what we just want to hug the both of them. <laughs> um, but this has the potential to go wrong, hasn't it? We're lying the cameras into school and and seeing lots of things. I mean, were you all confident you you could pass the test? I think it defines what you mean by going wrong. For me, it's we're showing an honest and an open account of what school is like. They could play up to the cameras. Oh, yeah, and they did think Yeah, it could staff all probably do as well, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> so I remember, you know. So how, how are you able to to you know keep order in the classroom, knowing that the cameras are right? Well, I think it was great for the production company that we did it with. They were brilliant. And, and, and the novelty quickly wears off, and it's surprising how quickly it does. Even for me, I went in every day with makeup on because there was a camera crew around. And then <laughs> yes. at the end of the second week, it was going in with no makeup because it just becomes <laughs> so natural. And the cameras, I thought it would be chasing you around the corridor with a big rig, but it's not. The stationary cameras in a classroom it's like sort of like brother. CCTV, yeah. So you, you forget they're really there. Natural, you forget they're there. Yeah. So I think, yeah, the kids might have played up for the first couple of days, but the production company were brilliant and dealt with it. And anyone who was seen to be playing up just for the camera, they were not put in the program. What really about weird. you boys? What was it like knowing that those cameras were around or did you forget about them? Eventually? It felt a bit weird at the start, yeah. like when you walked in and you see the cameras there. But the when... camera all falling you away. Yeah. yeah, but when, when you, you get used to them, like, forget there was a... So, what? Rani, have you seen the, the finished programme yet? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and? Quite like it? Yeah, good. Yeah. And what do you hope, Jack, that people will learn about your school? What do you love about your school? And what do you hope that we will all learn about your school watching this show? The passion of our school. You, like we're all together as like a big family, um, yeah. Yeah, and you're all part of that. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know, I would be very proud to be associated with Harrop Fold School in Little Halton mm. in Salford, having guys like you all around, including you, Miss Shanks. You give them a wave, Stacey really. See that, well. number two. Well, <laughs> they'll, all be in bed. they'll all be in bed. Yeah, they won't. Really they'll be, be watching you, won't they? Yeah. Yeah. Go on, give them a wave. Look, down there, camera safe. Say hey, everybody. Yeah. There you go. LH. Stars <laughs> of the show. Listen, it's a really lovely story, and I hope your friendship continues for many, many years. Lovely to see you, and thank you, Miss Shanks. Thank you very much. Class uh, dismissed. What's the capital city of Kenya? Begins with an N. Narnia. It's not Narnia. Educating is back. Oh, I hate school! And this time, we're in Greater Manchester. You know what, one minute to get in a lesson.
Madison, let's go. Where head teacher Mr. Bovey and his team take on the challenge of school life. I might have been partial to drawing something like that myself. <laughs> Why do you ever get a service at school? He's on Tinder. What's what's Tinder? Sorry. The dating website. So you see pictures. Oh. I don't know the words. Can we go on with the questions? Boom. I'm gonna change somebody's life if I do my job properly. The return of the much loved series, Educating Greater Manchester, 31st of August on Channel 4. Love to hear, to hear from you. <laughs> it does take a special sort of head teacher to turn around the worst school in the country. But Harrop Fold in Salford has been lucky enough to have just that person. Drew Povey has transformed the school in 12 years, impressing Ofsted inspectors, parents and pupils alike. So it's no wonder he caught the attention of Channel 4 producers for the new series Educating Greater Manchester. You've seen a bit of him already. Let's see a bit more, shall we? We're going to talk to Drew and a colleague in a moment. But first, this is Drew in action, instilling his discipline technique uh, with some uh, some pupils who've uh, put some rather choice words and a naughty bit of graffiti on a wall. Don't Deal with it. Again. There's been a man on the playground. Really, it's quite amusing, but I need to go and be angry, so I need to compose myself. Should we come in? Yeah. Can you sit down? No, you can't. None of you will sit down in this office. Get in and make sure you can see me and hear me. Everyone in this room better have their eyes glued to mine for this whole conversation. Your eyes come off mine and there's big trouble. Whilst we might have all done something like that when we're at school, and I might have been, um, you know, partial to drawing something like that myself in those circumstances. <laughs> I was a lad myself once, believe it or not. I think we have to look at the situation that we're dealing with, which is the reputation of the school, which makes me very cross very quickly. Do you have any idea what those people will be thinking of this school? Thinking of you, thinking of you, thinking of you, 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 you and you. Sit up straight, look ahead, then take your eyes off the camera. Uh, head teacher Drew Povey and head of year seven at the school, Julie Bland, are with us now. Welcome. Morning. Good morning. We are terrified, Drew, to meet you <laughs> this morning. Even you look quite scared to see yourself on camera there. Right, I mean, yeah. you do a good job at that. What, what would be your, your main lesson in, in instilling discipline in that kind of situation? What are you trying to achieve? Uh, well, eyes, eyes on me, as you could see from, from the clip there. But I think it's about setting boundaries with young people. Uh, making sure they know what's right and wrong. Uh, I think that's key. And, and also it's about making sure young people, you can build a relationship with them. So if you want to have real influence, you've got to have a relationship. So just saying to them, that's right, that's wrong, that's what you need to do is, is, is probably not going to work. Are they scared of you? Um, I don't know. Some, but I get asked this. Is it, is it kind of uh, fear or, or respect? Uh, I'm not sure. You'd probably have to ask the kids. But I think you need, you need a healthy mix of both. Judy, tell us about your role at the school. Yeah, I'm the year leader for year seven, but I'm part of a team. There's five year leaders for each year group, and we work together. Um, I'm involved in inducting children into school from primary and uh, settling them in. Settling them in, that's yeah. quite key, isn't it? Because it's not just, here's your classroom, no. here's where to go. You're looking at specific, perhaps, issues, integration yeah. issues, yeah. Um, being part of, of the school or perhaps not understanding the ways of the school without feeling yeah. isolated if you're different. Yeah, definitely. And I think children come in with different problems and issues. Most children just settle in, no problems at all, but other children need more support. Tell me about one of the... Um, when the school was approached, and we'll, we'll talk to you, Drew, in a moment about this, but as mm. someone who's not the overseer, someone who is mm. part of the team, who's talking to the children all the yeah. time, one of the difficulties with programmes like this mm. is it highlights bad behaviour or children who are perceived as bad, not just mm. naughty, but bad, and the negative impact it can have on them. Mm. How concerned were you about that and what reassurances were you given? Uh, I wasn't really concerned about that. I mean, school is a school. The daily working life is a school. There's all kinds of things going on all the time. and We're used to it, used to dealing with the behaviour and whatever presents itself. We're quite proactive and we can be reactive as well if we need to be. So I didn't really have any concerns about that at all. We've got one clip, I mean, a particularly sensitive story uh, yeah. on the programme. This is a clip we can show. This is Rani, who's a boy yeah. from Syria, who, who struggles 
at the start when he joins, but then he strikes up a friendship with a classmate called Jack. Here they are. You all right, there, lad? What you have to do is match up the same colour paint. Which one doesn't match up any colour? Oh, oh no, oh, I this, this one. Oh, Ronnie, well done. I think that's right, isn't it? Yes, Ron. Two. There's two black there. Half the amount white. Five by two. Five by two. Two to one. Exactly the same. I'm going to do the bright. We like um, twins. We like... <laughs> Oh, great smiles there. I mean, we were talking there about letting the cameras in and seeing bad behaviour, but, you know, Drew, you, you also must have been very conscious about, you know, the, the vulnerabilities of some pupils, you know, because it's a difficult time, isn't it? I mean, how do you approach that when you're trying to persuade parents, kids, teachers, staff, to the, that you're going to invite Channel 4 in and it, they can film you warts and all? Yeah, I don't, I don't think it was about convincing people. I think it was about giving them the information and we took a vote with the students and we took a vote with the staff and we asked parents their views as well. And well, it literally was, hands in the air. Absolutely. Yeah. It, was a, it was a collective decision um, that we all had to make because I can't go in and say, this is what I think we should do. I think it's about presenting people with the information and it certainly worked for us. And, of course, there are risks to go with it, but mm. we're extremely proud of what we've achieved at the school. Uh, it's, a, it's a great place. Uh, the, you can see from people like Jack and Rani, brilliant kids, fantastic staff and we thought why not put ourselves out there and showcase the great things that are happening at the school. Staff obviously have been the key to your success in leading a team to turn around one of the worst schools yeah. in the country and you've done that with staff like Julie Absolutely. at your side but also with a couple of brothers in the mix as well. Yes. So what are you Mr Povey 1, Mr Povey 2, Mr Povey 3? Well, it depends, it depends how you look at it. I'm sure the kids have got many names for us uh, <laughs> that they would use, but I'd be head Povey. And then uh, my brother, Ross, my older brother, he was there first, so he'd be known as Music Povey. Yeah. And then my younger brother, Ben, he came third, and he's known as Behaviour Povey. So we've all got our titles. Julie, what about. are they called behind their back? That is what they're called. <laughs> behind their back. Head Povey, Music Povey and Behaviour Povey. Sounds like working for the Mafia. <laughs> I think um, I think the children are just used to it, and I think they like it as well. I think they like that familiarity and that attachment. They get attached to people, and um, you know, it's just it's a lovely environment in which to work. It's great working with kids. Yeah, I mean, it must be hard, I think, to get used to the cameras and stuff, isn't it? When the cameras are in the school and they're following everything you do, do you? Is, is that is what we see on telly really what it's like? Yeah, I think I think from the outset you have to really decide that you're ignoring the camera straight away in order to be yourself. So from the outset, it's, you have to forget they're there. Looking forward to the term starting? Can't wait. Yeah, it's been a long, it's a long time when you... You looked hesitant there, Julie. <laughs> well, I've had a busy six weeks, so, yeah. yeah I'm, I'm, I am glad to You're welcoming the year sevens into the school, so, yeah, yeah it's probably the busiest time of year. Oh, yeah, it's going to be busy. Thank, Thank you, you both very much indeed yeah. for joining us. Thank you, good luck. Um, you. You're still Thanks giving us the eye, have you noticed? Know, still, <laughs> still staring. <laughs> Uh, thank you. Good luck. Uh, enjoy the show. And uh, you can see Educating Greater Manchester tonight on uh, Channel 4 at 9 o'clock. Um... You want to change young people's lives. That's what we're here for, isn't it? This week, it's all about behaviour. A great future leader. Lessons over. Did I ever do to a brother like you? Yeah. Got a short attention span, like a frog. Who'd work with kids? The brand new series, Educating Greater Manchester, Thursday at 9 on Channel 4. Also available on all four. Yes, and we join now by TV's newest head teacher, Drew Povey, from Educating Greater Manchester. Welcome, Drew, or Mr. Povey, I should call evening. you. Um, so we saw yeah, Hassan. Sort that there. out now, quickly. We're good. Let's go for Are Drew. Are we going to Drew? We're Let's going go for Drew. Drew. Come whatever you want. All right. Um, <laughs> yeah, he's used to it. Yeah. Well, we saw Hassan there in the film, and he's obviously really disillusioned um, yeah. with teaching. I mean, so much so he's left to set up his own burger joint. You know, is this something you see a lot of? Yeah, I mean, it's an amazing job teaching. It's one of those jobs you can go in every day and you're going to change somebody's life um, mm. if you do the job properly. So it is amazing, but there's also a lot of workload that's coming with it and a lot of challenges as well. And along with the workload and challenges, a lot of change. So it's, 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 it, it is tough as well as being a brilliant job. And mm. for some mm. people, those negatives are going to outweigh the positives and they, they decide to leave. But I think that's a shame. And, and what kind of challenges are you talking about at the moment? Why it's so overwhelming specifically now? Yeah, I think, I think workload has gone up because of um, changes to the whole exam system. So I think people are trying to get, get to grips with the new exam system and mm -hmm. what that means mm -hmm. for teachers, so it's new material. Because there isn't such an onus on coursework. Now. Exactly, yeah, coursework's going down, so we're 
preparing kids for exams and trying to get them into the right place for those exams, which is uh, a real challenge for mm. us. And I think, you know, with changes in the DfE, what Ofsted, you know, are going to be coming in and the questions they're asking, it's an increasing workload. And because of that increasing workload, you can sometimes lose the reason why you go into the job. And yeah. we come into the job to change people's lives, to educate, to inspire, to take kids beyond where they ever thought was possible. Mm. But you sometimes lose sight of that because you're dealing with those challenges and mm. that, 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 that work load which mm. which takes your, your eye off the prize so what solutions then do you see I mean what solutions do you have in your school to help the teachers out yeah we, we do we do lots of things I think it does come down to, to school leaders as well to help calibrate that because mm. you know you do remember a negative a lot more than a positive so if you've had a bad day and you're going home to a stack of work and you're not seeing your friends and family because that stack of work's there um, you know you can remember that or you can have a bad day and you can mm. remember that mm. too and I think we've got to remind people that there are brilliant things happening in schools and we are having these great interactions with kids and uh, so many of them are doing amazing things that we've got to be reminding our staff that there's a load of good stuff happening in schools as well and yeah. we've got to we've got to shine a light on so that. almost changing the, the culture within the teaching itself yeah absolutely i mean hopefully that comes across in the educating series we do a lot of that at harrop because we haven't had the easiest of times we've dealt with some reputational issues we've dealt with huge financial issues yeah and what we've tried to do is to say to teachers it is difficult it is hard at times and it is going to be exhausting, but we're doing something amazing. So hopefully as well as exhausting, they're going to find it exhilarating. And yeah. we try and remind people on a daily basis, you're changing people's lives. You are changing this yeah. community and that's an amazing thing. And that's a privilege to be able to do. Um, and constant reminders like that, I think are really important in education. We hope the series will, will bring some hope to, to uh, yeah. the world of education, as well as showing people the, the incredible work that teachers are doing in every school across the country. Yeah. Well, thank you, Drew, and people can uh, follow the progress of the school by watching Educating Greater Manchester. It's on tomorrow night, 9 o'clock on Channel 4. Thank you, Drew. Thanks for your time. Well, as we said... Nobody aspires to be average. This week, meet the students competing to become Harrop Bowl's first ever head boy and girl. I want it a lot. I think it's a really good opportunity. You could be inspirational. I want to make the difference wherever it can be made. Surprisingly, not applying for my job. Brand new, Educating Greater Manchester, Thursday at 9 on Channel 4. Also available on all four.